We're here in Cardiff for the annual congress of the BVA and we're going to talk to some vets about the biggest issue facing many farmers today and that's bovine TB. What is the bovine TB situation in the UK today? Well, in terms of, uh, it's, it's obviously split over the country. We know that the west of the country where cattle are tends to be worse with, with TB. But in general, TB is, is still getting worse over the country. But um, in terms of uh, areas, we've got southwest Wales and, and northwest, unfortunately, where, where cows are. Um, and that's where TB tends to be the worst. And how about the split between England, Scotland and Wales? I mean, there's, a, there's a big difference in the number of cases, isn't there? Yes. Uh, um, again, I mean, Scotland obviously have just announced their TB-free status and you know, good on for them for doing that. Um, they then have distant problems in that if they're going to buy you know, cattle to finish in Scotland, they've got to be very careful where they're buying them from. Um, and then Wales and, and England are probably not that dissimilar in terms of the amount of TB, although um, you know, Wales is a smaller, smaller country, clearly, and so they probably don't have the, the difference of the East quite, quite like England do. The situation is still getting worse. We still have a great deal of TB in the southwest of Wales, along the border between England and Wales, and indeed it looks like infection is, is in fact spreading north as well. We've always regarded North Wales as being relatively clear of TB, and it has a lower incidence of infection, but uh, we are now finding new cases in North Wales as well. How fast is it spreading? Are there new hotspots cropping up all the time? Well, we've just had Yorkshire as a, as a problem. And um, what can happen, I think what we need to be aware of, is that a lot of concentration, obviously, is on, on badgers and the effect of badgers passing TB to cattle. But what we, we don't know the full story in Yorkshire, but it's quite likely that will be a TB cow moving from an area where TB is a problem into a new clean area. And I think farmers have to be aware that there are risks of buying cattle that you can actually buy TB in. And of course, if you're in an area where you're not being tested very regularly because you're in a low-risk area, that cow could be in your herd for maybe three years before your routine test comes up, by which time it may have actually spread within your herd. So farmers have to balance up the risks of do they go to a risky area and buy cattle from an area where TB is a problem, or do they go to a clean area to buy cattle, but actually those cows haven't been tested for maybe three or four years. And that seems to be becoming more of an issue with farmers. They're thinking much harder about that, whereas before they'd often say, well, I'll go to a clean area because I don't think it's got TB but they're now aware that without regular testing that actually those cows could be a risk as well. Cattle controls are, are, are absolutely imperative to help control the spread. I personally am a vet in a free area from TB at the moment and I certainly don't want to see TB infected animals land on my patch and create a, another TB um, endemic area. Um, and if we do move an animal, a cow that has TB and then it becomes um, an infectious animal within a new herd, it is going to cause a problem. So cattle controls are absolutely crucial. What is the testing regime and um, how often do animals get tested? Well there are, there are basically four categories. You've got annual testing and, and then you've got two year, three year of which there aren't very many and then the big swathe of the country is on four year testing. And we base our testing on when disease has been found. So we're paying catch up all the time. So if, uh, and we, have a, we do have a, an eastward creep of TB and that probably will have a wildlife component to it. But when a herd goes down, that triggers lots of testing around it and then you may find more disease and then you trigger more testing. And so what we're doing is we're playing catch up all the time. There's two aspects, major aspects in terms of bovine TB spreading. Um, the major one that everyone's concerned about is obviously the wildlife driver. In other words, um, infection in wildlife species, particularly the badger of course, which is the one of main interest, um, overspilling into cattle um, and getting into the cattle herds out there and causing breakdowns. And the other one is between cattle themselves. So within a herd from an infected cow to non-infected cows within the herd, and then if you sell on an infected cow to someone else, they buy it, and then that can obviously spread within that herd, the destination herd. And clearly we also have a wildlife problem where we've got infection being driven back into the herd by, from, from badgers and that's a big conundrum because you've got to question how much effort and money either the government or farmers spend on trying to get TB out of their herd if they're going to end up keep getting it back and I think we're all aware until we address that side of things then you know the fertility of continuing to test and kill cows is is not helping anybody. The main thing a lot of farmers mm -hmm. talk about is the problem in badgers, what's mm -hmm. being done about that? 
well, we're aware of the fact that we have infected badgers here in Wales. That's no surprise, but we have got infection, not in badgers across the whole of the country, but certainly in areas where TB is endemic in our cattle population. So, for example, in southwest Wales, um, we have a particular problem where we see infection circulating in our cattle, but also evidence that infection is coming in from outside and in many cases that's partly due to a wildlife component and um, namely the badger. So we're interested in the relationship uh, between infection in cattle and infection in badgers and we realise if we can't deal with infection in both species then we won't succeed in our objective of eradicating TB from Wales. So we're aware of the problem and the question is well what can we do about that and we recognise from the scientific evidence available that in some circumstances it would also be necessary to remove badgers, to cull badgers, alongside applying stringent cattle control measures. And uh, that's um, a piece of work that we're now considering very carefully. Last March, the minister made um, a statement which said that she was minded to conduct a cull of badgers alongside cattle control measures, provided that um, uh, we could meet specific uh, requirements in terms of um, the possible impact that treatment would have on the environment, um, subject to being able to deliver that effectively, subject to the laying of appropriate legislation to allow us to do that in a coordinated way. Well, I don't think it's acceptable any longer to fudge a decision about TB. The situation is getting worse by the day. We've already seen 200,000 cattle slaughtered. That number is rising. We've seen a cost of at least £400 million to the taxpayer. That number is rising. We see the impact on the morale of farmers and the industry. Geographically, the disease is spreading. We just can't go on like this. And I think the government has fudged, funked the decision uh, and it needs to be taken. And there needs to be a proper TB eradication program. That needs to be instituted without further delay. And that will include a cull of badgers. There's increasing agreement that this is necessary. I think the science points to it. And we can't just wait for a vaccine to appear, hope that it works. I think there's a great deal of scepticism about uh, that project. You know, if it does work for the future, then fine, but we've got to take action now. How does bovine TB affect the badgers themselves? As a veterinary surgeon, I have serious concerns about the level of TB that's actually within the badger population. Um, ecologically, one could argue that it's a natural disease of badgers and we must therefore um, let the disease take its course. I don't adhere to that. If I see an animal with um, many suppurating um, horrible pus pus-filled pus abscesses and they have to be painful and we certainly see badgers that are thinner than they should be and they are weaker and I think that animal is suffering like I said that's a very personal veterinary point of view and if we can do anything within that species to minimize um, the, the, the incidence of that disease I think it can only be a good thing for the species.